Hi, hi, Genki Call here with the Soul Forge offerings for the week of June 20th, 2022. I have not looked in here yet. I don't know what's in here, except that uh, I was told that Arachne Weaver is in here. But besides that, let me just double check this real quickly. I'm looking for Centurigon. His colors are red and brown, so that is what we're looking for. I think that is one troop that would absolutely be worth trying for with your jewels. Uh, okay, so let us start with the legendaries. We've got Celestasia, who is... Eh, create nine gems of a chosen ally's mana color, cleanse and give 39 life to them. You know, I think that I have kind of disrespected Celestasia unnecessarily in the past. <laughs> that cleanse is super helpful, um, gives them life, you know, but Divinia really does it better because she cleanses the whole team and gives them life. So, I mean, <laughs> if you're going to go for a legendary that cre get gives mana to the team and cleanses and gives life, Divinia would be better. I can't help comparing them because we're in Dragon's Claw this week. She's okay, though. I mean, the cleanse is very nice. The life is nice. The extra mana is nice. Barrier is nice, but it's only for herself. So, worth 800 diamonds? I don't think any of these are worth 800 diamonds personally, but let's go over them and you can decide for yourself. So, next up, we've got Sylvana Mora. Actually, really like this troop. Explode a column. Deal damage to all enemies, which makes her very nice for quick delves, and entangles the first enemy on 4 plus gem matches, making her really nice to run with Tannenbomb, who's going to do triple damage to entangled enemies. Ah, I like her. I like her a lot. Would I spend 800 diamonds? No, I wouldn't, because 800 is so, so many, and, and less... In my opinion, you shouldn't be crafting any legendaries unless they are something that you are just dying to have. You have a specific team in mind for them, and you just really have to have them. Or, if you need to, to get a uh, power level up in one of your kingdoms. Just in general, that was what I would suggest. But Glitter Claw, super useful, actually. Damage to a random enemy, transforms all blue gems to green to boost the effect, and fairy fires all enemies. It's the fairy fire that really makes Glitter Claw awesome because that means, you can see it right up here, that any troop that's fairy fired will take an extra 50% damage from spells. So... Something that does 10 damage, an extra 50% is 5, so that would be 15 damage instead of 10. I mean, it really, really can make a difference. Also, gain enchant when matching red gems. Gain 1 magic when an ally casts a spell. And she can loop. So, I think she's really a very useful legendary. Um, you know, she's kind of a support troop because she only hits one enemy, but the fact that she can help you loop and she fairy fires is very, very nice. Nimu, um, she, I actually really like this troop, and I think that she is, I think she's pretty good. So she is a double mana converter, yellow to skulls, red to purple, silences the two strongest enemies. I think the reason that people generally don't use her is because when you're doing explorers in Merlantis, she is the bottom troop in the enemies for your explorers. And she's mana blocked. <laughs> she's always mana blocked, so she never gets a chance to actually cast her spell, or rarely which means that people don't actually get to see her in action very often. I think she's a really good double mana converter, personally. I really enjoy this kind of troop, but then again, I love <laughs> I love using skulls and just blowing the heck out of my, my enemies with skulls. So, um, steal four life from the first enemy when matching green gems, and um, that's Nemo. So, always here, always here, always here. Pharos Ra is in the Soul Forge. Aha. So, we were just in Qatar, and if you were dying to get Pharos Ra and didn't manage to pull him with your event keys while we were there, 
He's now in the Soul Forge. So he transforms yellow gems to purple, which means there's a possibility of looping when you cast. Damage to one enemy boosted by my souls. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, and you get 20 souls. This should say get, not give. But you get 20 souls. If you're running him with phylactery, which will basically fill up your souls, he gets 150% bonus souls from battle. He's not just a necromancer, he's a necromaster, and he's the only one in the game. He is absolutely the very best troop that you can have if you're soul farming, because you can get more souls per battle. You put him on a quick explore team with phylactery, usually, um, and you will be getting a ton of souls. Um, now that Nomapalooza and the Vault is really so prevalent in the game, he has lost some of his value, but he is still, as I said, the best mana or soul generator in the game as far as troops go. Uh, Zithinos is always here, as is Zulgoth, Arachnian Weaver. I think um, if you know me, you know that Arachnian Weaver is one of my absolute favorite mythics. Web all enemies, which means that their um, their magic drops to zero. If their magic is zero, then this number drops dramatically. So if Arachnian Weaver, Arachnian Weaver can't be actually can't be webbed unless it gets cursed first. Um, but let's just, for the sake of argument, say that Arachnian Weaver got webbed. This would drop to zero. It's magic plus five. So instead of doing 50 true damage to the last two enemies, she would do five damage to the last two enemies because of that plus five. Zero plus five is five. So um, yeah, it's really powerful for fighting spell-based enemies. And if an enemy dies, explode 15 gems. I have a favorite team. I have a spotlight for Arachnian Weaver, which I will put at the end of this video. You'll find a thumbnail to the Arachnian Weaver spotlight, mythic spotlight that I did with teams that you can check out. And if that will help you decide whether or not you want to craft her. The most powerful thing about Arachnian Weaver, <laughs> this is such a good mythic, 75 75% chance to summon a web spinner when an enemy dies. The web spinner, if you are not familiar with the troop, he does triple skull damage to webbed enemies. And his second trait is to web the enemy when he hits them with skulls. So unless they're immune to webbing, they're going to get triple skull damage on them. Uh, it's also triple skull damage to poisoned enemies, but... It's just an amazing summons. Just overall, really, really solid troop. I love this thing. Ah, <sighs> it's a favorite of mine for sure. Oh my goodness, Ironhawk is in the Soul Forge. Ironhawk is in the Soul Forge. Aha. Well, we've already looked at it. Let's go ahead and go over this. So. Yeah, I can give you a thumbnail for quick explore teams that will showcase Iron Hawk. Or maybe I did a Mythic Spotlight. I can't remember. But I'll link something in at the end of the video for you. This is the, the winner, hands down, of the fastest possible explore team that you can have on level 1 explorers. You have one or two of these. It just... You'll see from the video um, what you can do with this, but basically you cast, cast, and done. I mean, it's just over with in seconds. It's really amazing. And it does create Doom Skulls and explodes a bunch of gems so that you can basically clear the board. And with all of those Doom Skulls, every Doom Skull is 5 damage. So 5 times 12, just damage from the Doom Skulls that it creates, provided that it explodes them all pretty darn good um, but this is what makes it so fast because every time you cast a spell it does five damage to all enemies every time and if you have two iron hawks it doubles if you have three higher iron hawks it's times three that would be 15 damage to all enemies when you cast a spell so check out the video if you're not aware of the team 
or teams rather there are like four or five of them that you can use for quick explorers really really useful absolutely the fastest possible team that you can have for noma paloozas uses two iron hawks and two empowered um, troops with extra turns so ah very very nice the last troop that we have in here mythic wise for this week is amarok amarok does damage to an enemy 2% chance to devour them boosted by red gem. So every single red gem, because of the times 4 boost ratio, every single red gem is an extra 4% chance to devour. If you have a lot of red gems on the board, he's actually really good at devouring. Um, also, if they die, if you kill them or devour them, whichever way it dies, he creates 9 red gems. And Oh, and by burning enemies, I missed that part. But he burns and stuns a random enemy when matching 4 plus gems. The stun is very interesting. Because stun on match 4 is really powerful. Because anything that's stunned loses their traits. And so if they're Im immune to devour, for instance. If they're immune to devour and they get stunned, they're no longer immune to devour. So... That is really um, useful. I tend not to use him because I prefer High King Iron Gut, but he can be fun for something different. Uh, as far as weapons go, Egg Explosion. I must have all things, so I will be crafting the two here that I don't have. The Egg Explosion. Create four gems of a chosen color and heal 39 life. This is a really crappy weapon, in my opinion. Oh, it's Explode, not Create. Explode four gems of a chosen color. It's better that it's explode but still there are so many really awesome awesome weapons in this game that i kind of have to say that this is pitiful but i must craft it because i have to have all of the weapons never again am i going to be mana and i'm sorry not mana but uh weapon blocked <laughs> because of not crafting something so the next one here this is one of those epic weapons that's only 75 diamonds um remove all red gems which makes it really nice for red guild wars day for defense because you're taking away all of the red from the enemy um deal damage to the enemy boosted by gems removed you will not get any of that red mana for your team but you do deny it to your enemy and if they're from Dragon's Claw, or if the battle is in Dragon's Claw, you'll do double damage. So, again, this is a really cheap, you know, cheapish weapon. Um, if you need weapons to get your power levels up in Dragon's Claw. So, this is always here, always here, always here. The Mystery Egg. I remember when this came out. <laughs> The mystery egg creates eight red and eight yellow gems, then summons either a dragon egg or a fell dragon egg. It's okay. I mean, you've got straight up eight red and eight yellow gems. Period. And it does summon, but I'm not so fond of the summons because the dragon eggs are kind of... They're better as a barrier, in my opinion, than anything else, because then you get full mana and you cast... You have to have an open slot, otherwise all it does is heal itself. So you have an empty slot, you get a baby dragon, you have to get mana for that, and then you have to cast again before you can actually get something that might be useful. It could be a mythic, and it could be something really not useful at all, but there it is. Anyway, always here, always here, Volcanic Shield. Oh, Mace of Claws, I like this weapon. Okay, Volcanic Shield first. Give armor to an ally. If the ally uses red mana, give double the armor. And if the enemy has a boss, explode all red gems. So if the last part of the spell is very situational, because how often are, is the enemy going to have a boss? In raid boss, or if you're fighting a team that, like PvP or Guild Wars, that's it. That's the only time you're going to see a boss Except for the dungeon, I keep forgetting the dungeon is also a boss. Boss troops down there. But, eh, it's okay. Must have. Already have. Wahaha. Alright, Mace of Claws. I like this weapon. 
Deal damage to an enemy boosted by dragon allies and create a mix of six red and purple gems for each dragon ally. This is very nice to run with the dragon soul because the dragon soul uses red and purple. So I like to use this in delving with the dragon soul on a pure dragon team. Um, I like it. It's not a must craft in my opinion, but I do like the weapon. It is fun for something different. Doomed focus, meh. 900 diamonds, man. Nah. You'd be better off waiting for a different doom. Um, create four red gems plus one gem per tempering level. That means you can get up to 14 red gems if you have this leveled all the way up to 10, which takes forge scrolls, which are very, very hard to get. Um, give armor to all yellow allies. Why? Yellow allies, why red and yellow? That doesn't make any sense. If the enemy has a doom and limit, why, 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 why red when this is a yellow weapon? Why red when this is giving armor to yellow allies? I don't get it. Be good with Divinia, I suppose, but eh, I am not impressed. Dragon Tails is the last weapon in here, the last thing to go over for today's Soul Forge video. Deal damage to an enemy boosted by Dragon's Claw allies, so it has to be specifically Dragon's Claw. Then create a mix of six red and purple gems for each Dragon's Claw ally. Once again, you can use this with the Dragon Soul. Um, I like the other one better. It's the same colors, but it's just dragons in general. It doesn't have to be one kingdom. That's entirely up to you. How you feel about that? We do have some really good weapons coming up here in the Soul Forge in the next month or so. We've got, for instance, the Celestial Flask will be coming soon, and um, Scale Guard Protector, one of my favorites for running with Venetia, is coming. Just a lot of really good weapons, so keep that in mind. Anyway, that is your Soul Forge video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Bye bye.